Hello everyone, Sam here. Um, I thought I'd jump on and do a video talking about overcoming chronic guilt and how guilt plays a part in OCD, in my journey, um, in my suffering um, and other people's suffering that I see and just how it can stay latched if we don't do the required work and how OCD can move around when you feel like you've got over one theme or one act or one event or one thought, how OCD can move around in that regard and keep you just trapped in that chronic guilt cycle and also just how that guilt cycle feels. Okay, when I remember at times feeling utterly hopeless, helpless, um, just like there was no way out, completely trapped. I thought, no, I can't get through that. Or no, I, I can't see how, what, what's even the point of getting up the next day? I just couldn't see a way through the, the chronic guilt OCD cycle that I, that I was in for many, many years. So let me give an example. So it could be an event in the past, okay, regardless of what it is. Now, the key, the, the key point to remember there is that anything in the past could have happened. The only thing that's keeping you stuck now is your perspective, okay? Only when I started to realise that and adopt that and apply that to my own thinking did things start to change, okay? So I spent many, many years um, analysing the past, replaying the past over and over and over again, sort of trying to find the solution, trying to find the key, trying to find the answer, Okay, but that never came. That that was just to no avail. Because what OCD would do, it would chuck in another doubt. Or it would move the goalpost, move the boundary. Or are you sure that happened? What was your intentions there? How old were you? Was you drunk? Can you remember it? Did you mean to do that? Was that on purpose? All these questions and, and all these different scenarios running through your head. Now, um, that is a dead end, I'm afraid. Okay, but you can't just go, right, I'm going to stop analysing the past. It's not that simple with OCD. The key lies where we look at our perspectives in the now. Because if you change your perspectives and look at look at the event or, or, or look at the core fear in a more rational outlook, does that fear come down? Okay, so if you're no longer scared, or remember, acceptance is an agreement, so you can you can you can wholly disagree with an act, and you can, can you can strongly condemn an act, or, or 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 strongly regret something. However, if you're then rating yourself and calling yourself an evil, horrendous monster, or an absolute unforgivable, unacceptable person, that's when you get into emotional trouble. Okay, so that's the key point to remember. All right, so we have to look at. It. We, we The Unconditional Acceptance, laid out in Norbert Ellis's Myth of Self-Esteem book, chapter four, and that's, a, that's a, a book that I recommend, that's a chapter that I recommend if you're struggling, grasping the unconditional acceptance side of things. And it's not just self-acceptance, it's, it's other acceptance and it's life acceptance, okay? Three key points on the OCD recovery journey. Without unconditional self-acceptance, I wouldn't be able to get under chronic guilt. Um, I wouldn't be able to get under real event, false memory OCD, POCD, harm OCD, hit and run OCD, you know, all the taboo guilt-related themes i'd still be stuck strongly now with chronic guilt if i didn't apply the unconditional self-acceptance okay so that's absolutely vital along the journey all right so let's say you did something that you strongly disagree with in the past okay something that you strongly hate strongly regret okay you can feel very passionate about something go bloody hell i wish that didn't happen okay now you can view that and you can say look that was a bad act however the point you get into emotional trouble is when you label yourself, you label your human, your, your your identity, your personhood as evil, okay, as bad, as totally bad, as totally unforgivable, and can't be let off the hook. That is when you get into trouble. Okay, so we have to remember to separate the act from the from the individual. Okay, a key point to remember. Now you got that's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to watch this video and go right. Thanks, Sam. I'm recovered from OCD. That's not how it works. I wish for that. I wish for a quick overnight instant fix. It, 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 it bloody took longer than that. I can I can tell you that. But this is a, a first step we take towards recovery when we start opening our eyes to new rational outlooks, um, perspective changes, and um, breaking down beliefs um, uh, related to the core fears keeping us stuck. Okay, so separating the act from the individual, a crucial part. Okay, we've also got to look at it in a, in, in a more rational way. So why would someone make commit an act? Or, or what would their genetics be? What would their upbringing be? What's their environment? And that's a good one for unconditional other acceptance. Okay, I'm currently 
I'm watching a series on Netflix with um, uh, Inside Board Stuff is Prisons. And that's brilliant for compassion. So you can see, God, that was a bad actor. But then soon I don't just judge, oh, what an evil, horrendous person. Yes, I can say that act. I, I, I wholly disagree with that act. I 100% disagree with that act. Remember, agreement isn't acceptance. But I can look at the person and go, OK, why would this person have committed such an act? What's led him to do that thing? How is his brain wired? OK, what well, the build up towards that act. Why would someone do such a thing? Now, this is what we mean by breaking down perspectives. It's not the black and white, catastrophic, zero to 100, very rigid thinking. OK, you've done this. That means you're horrendous. That means you should burn in hell. That means you should die. You should be punished forever. OK, all these things that I used to hold on to, I used to cling on to beliefs like that. And OCD would just run rings around me, laughing at me as it, as it did. <laughs> all right. So that is the key point to remember. So... I would recommend with that, look at look at things that people may have done wrong in the past and apply the compassion and try and view it in a rational way. A key point, like I keep saying, acceptance is an agreement. So you're not trying to agree with the act, you're not trying to justify the act. You're saying, okay, how can a human how can a human perform such an act? Um, genetics, his brain, um, environment, upbringing, um, or just complete loss of control. And that would trigger quite a view with, with the fear of, of losing control. Um, but that's reality. People can just suddenly lose control, suddenly flip, and all of a sudden they're serving life in jail. Okay, these things can happen, um, but you can strongly disagree with that and, and condemn it. But you look at it in a more rational way and beginning to unconditionally accept people and, and why they would do such a thing. All right. And unconditional life acceptance as well. Absolutely vital for overcoming chronic guilt um, because that can relate to the fear of fear side of things. OK, I remember most of the time I was stuck because I was scared of being stuck forever. OK, so I might break down my specific fear. Uh, maybe, maybe it was POCD related or harm OCD related I might, or real event false memory in the past. I might break down that specific fear, but I'd still feel chronically anxious seconds away from a panic attack all the time um, and still just very chronically guilty and I was thinking why do I feel that way I want to break it down and go ah I'm actually scared of being stuck forever here I, I'd see it as utterly totally awful if I was stuck forever if I never recovered if I felt anxious forever if I was panicking for the rest of my life if I felt guilty forever I'm saying that's totally awful and unbearable that's why I'm getting into trouble OK, so we have to apply unconditional life acceptance. Yes, I wouldn't want to be stuck with OCD forever. Yes, I wouldn't want to be panicking forever or stuck with chronic guilt forever. But is it totally awful? No. Um, even when I've been suffering really, really bad with OCD, I've still enjoyed many, many moments looking back now. I've still done many things. I've still gone on holiday. Um, I've still managed to, to maintain a relationship. Um, I've, I've, I've still gone out with friends, socialising. I've still gone out to football matches, music events, um, cricket matches. <laughs> um, I've still managed to enjoy myself and sort of keep up with hobbies and interests. Now, I'm not saying that means I was totally happy when I was there. Even when I was there, I was probably feeling like utter crap. I'm not denying that. But I could still go. You know, I could still put myself out there. There's a lot worse things than suffering with OCD. And that's not taken away. That's not downplaying the OCD suffering. I get that's very, very tough. I've experienced that firsthand. However, there are, are very, in my opinion, there's much more difficult things and much more challenging things than, than OCD suffering. Okay. Talk about what some of the elements that people have in their life or maybe losing limbs or really serious illnesses, really serious diseases. Um, and then you're thinking, fuck, perspective shift. Or just loop someone losing their life altogether, just completely unexpected, boom, die like that, and you're thinking, fucking hell. And you, straight away, instant perspective and gratitude shift. Okay, key parts along the journey, key things to remember. Okay, and also you've got to look, in, you've got to look down breaking um, beliefs such as fear of going to jail, um, fear of, of being abandoned by family members, fear of rejection, all these things that come into the guilt side of things. Um and just you feel like no i can't cope with that so you start looking and um, a gel for example you could start breaking that down and go yes that'd be very 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 tough i certainly wouldn't want want to go to jail but if i do is it totally unbearable is it completely awful i can't stand it no it's not it's just something i really wouldn't want to be but could i you, you know could i exercise in jail yes i'm sure i'm sure some gels you can can i read a book yes can i try and pursue a hobby yes uh, can i look at my beliefs yes can i you know 
play cards. Yes, you, you sort of break it down and you're not going to the zero one hundred. Oh my God, that'd be totally awful. I couldn't stand that because that is when the chronic guilt gets in there. Okay, it's our beliefs around what we're scared of. If you're scared of going to jail, it's your beliefs around jail and the concept of going to jail that's keeping you stuck. Same with um, being abandoned by family members, loved ones, friends. Okay, it's your view of that. So yes, let's say um, all my family rejected me. I wouldn't want that. It'd be uh, I'd be very frustrating, um, very sad, um, very regrettable. Of course, so, so, something I'd aim for. I wouldn't, I wouldn't desire to have all my family reject me. Of course, but if that did happen, I'm sure I could adapt. I'm sure humans can adapt. I'm sure humans lived in the past um, and live in the now with, with no family members or if they have no one uh, they don't, they're not liked or, or they're strongly disliked by family members is it totally awful no it, is it a, a, a strong dislike yes okay so we're breaking that down we're looking at a more rational outlook okay it, 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 i can't highlight the importance of breaking down beliefs now you see me how i am today but trust me i was once in, in your shoes or oh, in the chronic guilt cycle you know nothing else matters oh what's the fucking point a zero to 100 really chronic guilt where i feel like i barely function okay i get that and I, i've experienced that but when i've broken down beliefs when I really change my perspectives, and you can't go into it half heartedly as well. You can't be half arsed going into going into breaking down beliefs. Okay, you've got to really want it. Okay, you've got to really look into it and go, look, what's the alternative? Do I want to be stuck with OCD forever doing compulsions? No. If I look at my beliefs, am I more likely to get better and and, and take a step towards freedom and not having not OCD having that power and that oomph that it currently has yes let's look at that way okay and it takes time it's gradual okay you gotta remember the, the the innate beliefs that we held um they're there for, they, they've they sort of <laughs> they've been um sort of conditioned into you okay and you've learned them from a very young age so you can't just go like that and they're all gone it takes time to adjust it takes time to shift your perspectives and, and, and yeah, like i said it's, it's light bulb moments that can happen at any random times Okay, I remember I mentioned in my previous videos, I remember just being out with friends um, and I just think, fucking hell, yeah, I just see that in a different light or on the way to work or out running or out walking the dog. I'm thinking, fuck, yeah, I can see that in a different light now. Okay, so remember, you're not forcing it. You're not trying to write down, you're not locking yourself in a room and going, right, I need to see this in a different light to recover from ACD because then you're forcing it. You're like, you're waiting for it and that ain't going to happen because if you're waiting for something, if you're really trying to force something, then the OCD knows that. It's going to dig its heels in and, it, and it's going to really um, get in on that and it's going to cling in there. Okay, so who knows? With perspective shifts, with breaking down beliefs, recovery might come with that. Who knows? Only all you can do is give it your best shot and, and see what happens. All right, so um, I think that said a lot on chronic guilt and the OCD side of things. Um, I don't want to go on too long. I want to keep it quite brief, quite snappy, quite straight to the point. No wishy-washy um, and, and straight in there. Okay, so I hope this video has been very helpful for you. If it has, please leave a like. That would be much appreciated. Um, any comments, any suggestions um, you'd like me to do, I might happily make some more videos. I'd, I'd welcome your suggestions. That would be great. Anything you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, then please do so. If you're interested in any of our webinar, one-to-one -one services, please email phil at ocdrecovery.com and he will get back to you in a, and we will get back to you in a timely fashion. Anyway, you take care and I'll speak again. Bye-bye.